Today with Joseph Prince. Especially at this time, remember what he has done for us. He brought us out of darkness into his marvelous light. And the hope for Singapore, the hope for America, the hope for the world is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Can I have a good amen? A number of years ago, I went to Israel. And uh, I think Lawrence, you're with me. We went into this quarry. All right, on the north side, we found out that uh, the quarries they built for the temple actually came uh, underground. Because the temple quarries, you've, been, you've, you've seen the temple stones, right? By the way, temple stones are amazing. They are huge, many of them. Costly stones, limestone, precious limestone. By the way, marble stone is a type of limestone crystallized. Okay, so marble, for example, do you, a, a three feet marble, if you have it in your house, as a foundation of your house and all that, you know how much it costs. I don't know what's the latest. I have no info, but let me tell you this. How about a, 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 a 12 feet of by 15 feet marble? How much do you think it will cost? And there's only one. And the Bible says in 1 Kings 7, 1 Kings 7, show them 1 Kings 7, uh, first 10, the foundation was of costly stones, large stones, some 10 cubits, some 8 cubits. So we have 10 cubits, which is a, a cubit is from your elbow to your, your, your middle finger here. That's a cubit, Bible cubit. Amen. So you have... 10 cubits and some 8 cubits. That's about, about, about 15 feet by 12 feet. One stone. When I was in Israel, by the way, you can see some stones here uh, that drop, uh, by the way. Show them some. Uh, these are our people down there. The stones that were thrown down by the Romans. Let's zero in. You can see far away the stone. Yeah, can you see the, the top part? Those are the limestone, nicely chiseled. Can you see that? And it's all broken because... The Romans, when they came in AD 70 and destroyed the temple, they, they by the way, that, there's a temple of Herod at that time. But the temple of Herod was built on some foundation stones of the temple of Solomon. Okay? So it's the same nature, same limestone. Of course, the temple of Solomon is more glorious. So they, they threw down the rocks, fulfilling the words of Jesus that said, not one stone will be turned. We're not, we're, 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 we left unturned. Jesus said that. On Mount of Olives, a young carpenter told his disciples, see the temple with all his glory, the days will come that not one stone will be left unturned. Then yonder in Rome, there was a young man called Titus. He was groomed to be the next emperor and he became the next emperor. And he came in AD 70 and he told his men, don't burn down the temple, burn everything else. Don't burn down the temple. Don't destroy the temple. But when, when the fire started, the gold started melting and went in between the stones. And the men started overthrowing the stones to get at the gold. So the words of the would-be emperor was disobeyed. We learned this from Josephus, the historian. And then the word of the young carpenter came to pass. Wow. Between the two, who would you believe? So anyway, that's the overturn stones. You see a remnant of it. These are from the precincts of the temple. You, st you still can see it today. All our group go down there. It's near the southern steps. Okay? Now, if you go down the temple area, of course, the temple don't exist anymore. Amen? You go down, there's a tunnel underneath. You can see the foundation stone. You know how huge the foundation stone? Until now, people are still puzzled as to how they can put the stones together until even a, slit, a, a, a piece of paper cannot go in between. When you see them praying at the wall, they put outside or in between just a bit. They cannot go all the way because it's, it's, it's hewn in such a way when they place it in place, it's perfect. Until now, the, all the uh, uh, stonemasons and people who study architectural engineering and all that, they are puzzled as to how they, they move such stones in those days. One of the stone foundation stone is about 45 feet. Are you struggling spiritually or exhausted from trying to be a perfect Christian? Will you let us bless you with a copy of Joseph's foundational book, Destined to Reign, today? Find out why your Christian walk is not about what you can do for God, but what He has already done for you. Request your free copy of Destined to Reign by visiting josephprince.org new or texting new to 71239 today. Offer available to U.S. residents only. One stone, about 45 feet. You know how much it weighs? 570 tons. Amen? In fact, many of you have seen it. It's right in the tunnel. And in 20, uh, 2008, 
I went there, and that's my daughter, by the way, Jessica. Can you see this stone near the, all the way down there? It's stretched right all the way down there. 570 tons, 45 feet. And, 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 and engineers are still marveling at how they, they move this. Anyway, I went to the quarry, and the quarry is not too far away from the temple area where they quarried it. And I went inside there and I preached a sermon that was never released. But we still have the video because the sound was, wasn't very, very good inside the quarry. Just imagine, we went in, they had lights now in the quarries, but back then it was pitch darkness. They worked with their torches, amen, the lamps they used back then, and they quarried it. Let me show you the quarry. But before I show you the quarry, and by the way, this is taken by us, and when I went there and preached, I saw some stones. You can see the areas where it's cut out, the square shape, all the stones cut out. And, and God gave me, a, of course, the, the, the sermon that I preached inside there about how God called all of us out of darkness into His marvelous light. Amen. First Peter 2, drop down and show them this. You are a chosen generation. Say amen. amen. A royal priesthood. You're not just a priesthood. You're a royal priesthood. Amen. When you're born again, you are born again with royal blood. Amen. You are, you are royal. So royal people, uh, don't, 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 uh, don't, they, they're not fussy. They're not, they're not picky. You know, they don't, they don't get angry over the smallest things. I mean, they're generous. They're big hearted. We expect that of royalty. When royalty don't act royal, we lose respect for them. Well, child of God, if anything, the, uh, holiness is nothing more than someone walking and, and people feel that royalty is in their midst. Amen. When you forgive, that's royal. Amen. All of a sudden, people feel like, you are a princess, you are a prince. You know, they feel it. It's not like, like I'm holier than thou, this, this hypocritical kind of like, you know, a holier than thou, don't come near me. No, no, that is religious. There's nothing princely, there's nothing royal about that. You are royalty. Amen. And holiness, you want to see how holiness looks like? It looks royal. Of course, the examples nowadays, you know, unfortunately, we look around the world, we try to find royalty, but you know what? Look at Jesus in the Bible. You find even dressed in the simple garb of a carpenter, by the Lake of Galilee, you know, in, in, the, in, in the mountainside. It's like, you see a king. And that's why I don't allow, allow his face to be seen anymore in the, in the video of the cleansing of the leper. You know, because no one can, can portray that. It's the majesty, the royalty. The Bible says his appearance is like the excellent as Lebanon, the cedar. Have you seen a cedar tree? That's how excellent, how royal he is. And yet he used his royalty to say, be cleansed. Eyes be opened. Amen. Date be raised. Amen. He used his royalty to bless, to set free. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. So we are all, notice, not we are royal priests of the holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Out of darkness into his marvelous light. So we are all called out of that. That, that quarry is dark. You have to go in with, with a lamb. In those days, imagine those workers. And they have to quarry inside. You, know? it, it, you must cut it out. Okay? And how they cut it is another uh, feat of engineering. Amen? And, and they cut it in shape. And I saw those shapes left behind. Before I show you, I need to tell you so you know what you're looking at. Amen? And I also found some rocks. Some, some were, were quarried halfway. But they were left with a square like coming out but they were left there. For some reason, they, they left that stone there. These are the pictures of people who are professors, not possessors of eternal life. People who say they are Christian, but they're never born again. People like Judas, who followed the Lord Jesus, but was never born again. Amen. None of the disciples were saved because Jesus had not yet died and rose again. They were saved on the day Jesus rose, and met them and breathed on them, they were saved then, but Judas wasn't there. So they were disciples, they were followers, but they were not saved. So he was a professor. A professor is someone who profess to be a Christian, profess to have eternal life, but they don't. Don't be a professor, be a possessor. And also God doesn't have grandchildren, only sons. Amen? Which of course daughters as well. Amen? So there's no such thing as a born in a Christian family. People tell me, I was born in a Christian family. No, it doesn't happen by osmosis. Amen? Going to a church doesn't make you a Christian. 
any more than going to McDonald's make you a Big Mac. So, He called you out of darkness that you may proclaim the praises of Him who called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. God wants the world to know how good He is. He wants our marriage, our career, our ministry, everything to proclaim His praises. He who called us out of darkness, pitch darkness into His marvelous light. We have all been delivered from the power of darkness and translated into the kingdom of His dear Son, the kingdom of light. We are sons of light. Can I have a good amen, people? So, right now, sit back. I'm going to show you the video real quick. And this is taken by us. And I was in the, yep, this is where they quarry it. Some places you got to bend down all the way. Of course, there are lights down there now. Okay, look at this part here. From the top, they quarried it. See, can you see a stone? This is the quarry where they took the stones from for the temple. There, they cut, they cut all these stones. It's all limestone. Now, you're about to see one that was left behind there, right there. Two of them. It was cut in place and it was left. Look up here, people. So out of that darkness, God brought us out. Now imagine, can they come out on their own? Not one atom of their work or merit can bring them out. So why are we giving them Ten Commandments? It's almost like giving them a ladder of 10 steps. Throw the ladder into the, rope ladder into the pit, into the quarry, and say, hey, stone, climb your way out. Only 10 steps. It's like giving them 10 commandments. No. They were still, you and I were still be in darkness. Had somebody not gone into the quarry, into the darkness, hewn us and brought us out to become our destiny, a living stone. We were a dead stone. You know what's a living stone? A stone on the rock. You ask any Jewish people, it's a Jewish expression. Uh, any, any stone on, on the ground is a dead stone. But the moment you, you build it into a, a, a temple, amen, it's a living stone. Or even a pillar, a memorial before God, is a living stone. Maybe that's where the name David, living stone, came from. Amen. So here we go. All right, we are taken out of darkness. Amen. Not a merit of our own. We, don't, we, we, we didn't put in any effort. Those ones, those ones who say, hey, I got myself out. No, he would still be there had he not been drawn out. We had to be drawn out. That means someone did it for us. As those stones cannot come out by themselves, someone has to go in and bring them out. So he brought us out. Remember this. At the end of the year, especially at this time, remember what He has done for us. He brought us out of darkness into His marvelous light. And the hope for Singapore, the hope for America, the hope for the world is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Can I have a good amen? I want to share with you a testimony right here. And there's a sister from our church. She wrote this testimony just this year. And she says, I grew up without my mother, so my grandmother had to fill in the role as my mother. I want to share this because uh, last week there was uh, on, on, on Christmas Day, I think uh, this past um, Christmas, uh, on Christmas Day there was an article in the, in the newspaper about the increase of mental health problems. Okay, and I just talked to my pastors about this, about the increase of mental health problems. Not because I saw it in them. I talked to them because to be aware, <laughs> to be aware, to pray for people with mental health problems. Amen. And uh, a few weeks ago, Pastor Lawrence actually prayed and also mental, uh, mental conditions. Amen. And, and it's on the, on the rise. But this article is about, about drinking and its relationship with, and, uh, with mental health. People are, people, are increased, people are drinking more now. And I mean, drink themselves crazy. You know what I'm saying? Becoming drunk, becoming addicted to alcohol. So she says, I grew up Without a mother, when she passed away, my life went downhill. My family had little time for me and I lived a rebellious lifestyle. With little guidance, I got into bad company. At the age of 16, I was drinking almost every day and smoking up to one and a half packets of cigarettes daily. This is very true of many young people out there now. And some of them are even hiding from their parents. The fact that they are drinking and they are smoking. 
I even got hooked on drugs for a period of time. At the age of 21, I attempted suicide due to stress from a toxic relationship and many other things. This was the third time, the third time I tried to heal myself since I was 16. Needless to say, it was another unsuccessful attempt. I was admitted to the hospital and placed in the Institute of Mental Health for a while. The entire ordeal was a blur to me, but during that dark season, I remember crying in my room. And one day I heard a voice saying, I am. I did not know what that meant until a few months later, after I started attending New Creation Church. Through Pastor Prince's teaching, I realized that God never left me, especially in my time of need. I believe that the voice I heard during my dark season was God telling me, I am your provision. I am your salvation. And most importantly, I am here. Today, I'm 23 years old. I love that I am here. Amen? There's an atheist who had this uh, poster in his house. God is nowhere. He had it up there for a long, 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 long time. One day, he had a son. Amen? His son was growing up and his son learned to read. And the son read real slow. Uh, you know, about three, four years old, he look up, he says, God is no now, now here. <laughs> I love it. And the father got saved as a result of that. Praise God. <laughs> Out of the mouth of babes. Amen. You see nowhere, you cut it half, now here. Amen. <laughs> God is now here. Today I'm 23 years old and I'm completely set free from the chains that had a hold of me. Oh, In fact, isn't it wonderful young people experience this? It's almost impossible for me to it was almost impossible for me to quit smoking, but after I prayed and asked God for deliverance on my birthday, my Abba Father answered my prayer. When God gives, He gives in abundance. See, she, she's believing the right things about God. He's not a taker, He's a giver. When He gives, He gives in abundance. My relationship, my family has been restored, and I'm, almost also, I'm also blessed with a boyfriend who loves and cares for me. He even attends church with me and is now safe. Praise the Lord for not giving up on me and turning the darker spirit of my life into a testimony. I'm so grateful for God's grace and I look forward to hearing Pastor Prince's sermon every week. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Give him the praise and the glory. How one person rescued from the pit of darkness, the pit of sin. Not because someone just rolled down the Ten Commandments and said, climb up by keeping them. Amen? Unless they are drawn out, they will still be in darkness. Our friends, our colleagues, our relatives, our loved ones, many of them are still in darkness and, and they do not know they are in darkness. In, because they are in darkness, they manifest, even saying, I don't believe in all, you know, and, and using strong words, profanities, even against a blaspheming God and, and, and what you believe in all that. Love them, they are in darkness because there's no light. We see because we see the light. That's why never despise people. You know, like, like someone gets agitated because a drunken act like a drunk. Duh, a drunkard will act like a drunk. Right? Right? Amen? Sinners? Sin. And then we, <gasps> sinners sin, brother. It just goes to confirm the word is true. Amen? It's not a denial of the Bible. It's a, a proclamation of the authenticity of the inspiration of Holy Writ. Amen? Love them unless they are drawn out. So God sends His, sends his, his evangelists, His quarrymen. Amen? Praise God. They did nothing. Hey, listen, listen. They were hewn out. Watch this. You know what happened to them? They are placed in the, in the Temple of Solomon, back to the Temple of Solomon. The Temple of Solomon is amazing. I'm going to show you this real quick, and, and you are so blessed to learn this because many places don't even teach Temple of Solomon. Okay, let me show you this about Temple of Solomon. Back to that verse just now in uh, 1 Kings 6, right? Here it says, now, if you look at uh, verse 7 just now, it says uh, the temple when it was being built. We read that just now. The whole context right now, go back. He made for the house windows with beveled frames. Whatever this is, in the King James, it says windows with narrow lights. In the temple of Solomon at the site, the, 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 lights are, the windows are amazing. It is white, out, uh, sorry, white inside, narrow outside. Narrow outside so to keep the weather, bad weather out. All right, but it's white inside. Can you see? It, it opens up this way. It's narrow outside, but opens up this way. So it brings in the light. Amen? Amen? In my Bible, it brings it up. I have an old Bible that I use. Uh, uh, it says, verse 4, And for the house he made windows of narrow lights. This King James Version. Can you see the, my marginal rendering says, Windows brought within, 
narrow without. If you meditate on that, what does that tell you? The bad goes out, all the good comes in. The light, the light. And don't forget, we are all made into the temple of God. Amen? I say we are all made into the temple of God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay, let's go back to the verse. And then it says, against the wall of the temple, he built chambers all around. Okay, look at the chambers. Back to the first original picture we showed just now of the temple of Solomon. At the site, on the sides, can you see a chamber protruding building? That's not the temple. That's the place where the priests live. That's where the tithes are put. That's where the storage place is, where the, all the treasures of the temple are. And the priest lives there. When David says, lift up your hands in the sanctuary, he's referring to all these chambers. The, uh, the, the, the priests were there. They live there. They sleep there. And this speaks of all of us. Jesus says, in my Father's house are many mansions. He was referring to this, in my Father's house, because this is pattern after heaven. In my Father's house are many mansions. We live there. And it's a place of treasure. Where the, li where the priests are living, their quarters, the chambers, is just by the temple. And it is a place where the treasures are kept. Okay, let's look at the chambers, the levels, the floors. Go back to the passage again. Drop down. Okay, next verse. The lowest chamber was five cubits wide. So keep this in mind. Lowest chamber, five cubits wide. Middle, six cubits wide. As you go higher, the third, seven cubits wide. Okay, what does it mean? Look up, look up here. The first floor, five cubits. As you go higher, six cubits. You go even higher, seven cubits. Come up higher, child of God. There are more treasures for you. Amen? Amen? So, and then it says, you know how they go up? And uh, verse 7, we saw verse 7 already just now. No hammer, no chisel was hurt. Okay, verse 8. The doorway for the middle story was on the right side of the temple. They went up by stairs to the middle story. Now, the stairs there is winding stairs. In the Hebrew, it's winding stairs. In fact, the King James says winding stairs. That's how they go up. Okay, look up here, people. We are made into the temple of God. We are designed by God. Do you know what they do? After you are put block by block, okay? You know what Solomon did? And this design, by, by the way, is not Solomon's head. It's from God. God gave it to David. David wrote it down by the Spirit upon him. By the way, uh, this is not automatic writing. The devil always tried to imitate uh, God's ways. Automatic writing is just putting your hand down there and waiting for an evil spirit to move your hand and, and, and write. Okay, if you've never heard that before, there's something called automatic writing. But, but I'm talking about God under the inspiration. Sometimes you just sit down. If you're a designer or you are uh, 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 preparing your sermon or whatever, have a piece of, you know, have a book in front of you and, and ask the Holy Spirit to anoint you. And then it's active. Automatic writing is passive. God will not want His people passive, yielding until another power come and take you. No, 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 no. God uses people that are active. Okay? You know what I'm saying? Let me see. You, 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 he cooperates with you. He gives you a brain to think. He gives you energy and strength to work. Amen? So you just, you just think the thoughts after God and start designing things. Start de this is how some of my sermons and all that and, and things that I do come out. Okay? Are you listening, people? David had this whole temple by the Spirit on him. All this God made me to know by His hand upon me in writing, He said. So the chambers, how it looks like, even the design inside, it's not done by human mind. It's done by the Holy Spirit. God gave him the design. And, but he's not the one to, to build the temple. You all know the story, right? And he had, his son will be the one to build the temple. God chose his son, Solomon. So here we go. Inside, you know what they do? Okay, drop down, verse, drop down. Okay, the doorway. Okay, so he built the temple. And he finished it. He paneled the temple, look at this, with beams and boards of cedar. So again, the stone are placed first, and then he bought them up with cedar wood. You know, cedar wood is what we call incorruptible wood. Do you know that uh, I once was in, uh, in Canada, and my wife and I, we passed by a, a, a row of cedar trees, and I just had to stop. I, I, I made a, a detour, I turned around, and I walked into that little forest, and, and I read the, the signs that were there, the, you know, the notifications and all that about cedar trees and all that. And I learned that a cedar can go up to, to hundreds and hundreds of years, even a, nearly a thousand. They are known as the incorruptible tree. And you know something? They cannot be, be uh, 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 parasites cannot operate on the, cannot work on the cedar tree. The parasites don't kill the cedar tree like other, other, other trees. 
the tree kills the parasite. Just like Jesus, he touched the leper. He didn't get what the leper had. The leper got what he had. It killed the leprosy and saved the leper. Healed the leper, amen? Blessed by what you've seen today? Subscribe to the Joseph Prince Ministries YouTube channel and never miss a single episode. New videos released daily that will encourage and empower you to live a victorious life.